Half a dozen professors of computer science and engineering at UC San Diego have become pioneers in the world of online learning, developing courses for the two largest online learning platforms, Coursera and edX. The specialization that we have on Coursera is called interaction design. And it spans a number of short courses covering different parts of interaction design. Uh, it grew out of a class that I've offered on Coursera since the spring of 2012 called Human-Computer Interaction. And it's based on the course materials I've been using, teaching at Stanford and UC San Diego to, to students uh, at the university for a number of years. I have a series of seven courses that form bioinformatics specialization at Coursera. We also develop a new course called Biology Meets Programming. And this course is developed for incoming students. It's even for high school students. Learners and universities came to online education for different reasons. Yeah. I was driven to online courses because suddenly I realized that the way I taught for two decades is wrong. It is an inferior way of teaching, and there is a better way to teach. We are probably the last generation of professors who are using traditional classroom as a teaching technology. I think that the most important factor for a university in considering how much and how to engage in online learning has to do with exposing their strengths as an institution and meeting their particular missions and needs. That's one of the reasons that many courses uh, from UCSD have been as popular as they are, because they reflect the very specialized but useful knowledge and skills that people out there looking to supplement their advanced degree really do need for their work. There's so many companies out there, there's so much stuff happening where there's this great need for people who are very skilled. And so when you have a need for that many people, it's just more people than you can educate in these traditional ways. And you can reach a diverse set by kind of opening up the field wide and kind of saying, anyone out there can come to us because we're everywhere. So I think that's the real need in this space. Just how popular is online education? For faculty accustomed to teaching small classes or even hundreds of undergraduates in an introductory computer science class, the online numbers are massive, as in Massive Open Online Courses, or MOOCs. Ravi Ramamurthy developed the first computer graphics MOOC for edX. The course has had a rich history, so we've offered it, I think, about half a dozen times at this point. More than 100,000 people have registered and 500,000 people have watched the video lectures. We've seen it translated into uh, Mandarin. Most of all, we've reached out to a whole body of students interested in computer science and interested in computer graphics who would otherwise not have, in, have been in the community and would not be doing computer, computer science or know anything about computer graphics. The number of people who continue to enroll absolutely amazes me. I never thought there would be a quarter million people in the world who were hungry for more <laughs> interaction design work. It's really cool. But it's a field that there's a huge amount of interest and opportunity and excitement right now. I mean, there's multiple Hollywood movies coming out about design. Uh, there's a lot of job opportunities. There's great opportunity for impact. And so we have lots of people who are interested, but not a lot of background historically. And I think that's one reason why we've seen so much interest in, in this class, both domestically, but also around the world. Over the last two years, we had over 250,000 enrollments in our courses. We've had over 300,000 visitors to the course. Uh, of those, um, almost 1,000 have completed all five big projects that are associated with the course, so that's a tremendous accomplishment. And then we've had oh, tens of thousands um, complete various courses, so each component of the specialization. So it's been a great turnout. There are good reasons for students to take online courses, particularly in certain fields. Computer science is a very special discipline because it has a unique way to test students' knowledge. You can give a student a programming challenge 
and you can test whether students understand material or not by checking whether students solve the problem and challenge. People who are essentially looking for continuing education and in many cases are working professionals are quite motivated to do so. And in fact, this is a huge untapped market that there are people who are just interested in continuing their education. And I really think that the power of technology to bring, uh, allow faculty to engage much more one-on-one uh, -on -one through video or through assignments that are auto-graded to give a more personalized experience through online materials is really something that we are excited about and are looking into. Unlike the traditional classroom, a challenge for online education has been grading for classes of thousands, even hundreds of thousands of students. But in recent years, faculty researchers have found solutions in tools such as peer instruction and grading. One of the things that enabled this class to happen online is that our HCI class was the very first of the MOOCs where we used, we developed in fact, a system for peer review so that students do creative work and then with the assistance of rubrics they evaluate each other's projects. You learn a ton by evaluating somebody else's work. When we've surveyed students and asked them about different aspects of the course, one thing that lots of people mention is the act of evaluating other people's work is a real uh, learning benefit. Peer instruction has been researched extensively and there's a, been a lot of work showing how effective it can be for students learning in the classroom. Research has shown that hearing other novices talk about the concepts um, in novice language is very effective to uh, retaining the concepts and to learning them more deeply. We are not just doing a multiple choice, rather than you submit the assignment when it's due, the TA takes a couple of weeks to return it to you. Here you can submit inst and instantaneously get feedback by which you can improve your program. And that was really motivated by this necessity of finding a feedback system for rich type of assignments in online courses. Our talk about system is one example of this. It, it's built on top of Google Hangouts, and so it uses video chat for students to be able to, to discuss things with each other. Our teaching assistants don't spend a minute checking homeworks because all our homeworks are programming assignments. As a result, my teaching assistants have time to interact with students. Our background in computer science education and computer science education research really influenced our design a lot. It's behind many of the design aspects and design decisions that we made when we were designing these courses. Uh, things like the fact that every course is grounded in a course-long project, that we start with that project from the very beginning and every single thing we teach to our learners comes right back to that project. According to Christine Alvarado and Mia Minnis, who jointly developed Coursera's intermediate software development courses with fellow teaching professor Leo Porter, having a large number of students in an online course does not mean giving everyone the same content. Our course explicitly tries to engage people who have different experience levels and different backgrounds, and we do this through things like providing multiple tracks for our learners to go through. If you need a little more support, then there's a little more support for you. If you're pretty advanced, you can just kind of advance along the advanced track. So we didn't take for granted that just because the schedule is flexible, that would mean we'd get a bunch of different learners. We actually engineered for those different learning styles. I think the, at its best, online learning goes beyond being there. And given that it's delivered through computers, I think we have tremendous opportunity for using computation to make a more interactive learning experience. That opportunity for rich, synchronous peer learning experiences, uh, for me, is something I'm really excited about. Online has a very powerful benefit of helping us to serve the students who come into our program from exceedingly diverse backgrounds, helping us to level the playing field for students who maybe really have no background or need extra support in terms of moving at the pace that our on-campus courses need to move to help students get done and graduate and be prepared in four years. Beth Simon took a two-year leave of absence to work at Coursera to learn more about the world of MOOCs. She recently returned to UC San Diego, moving from computer science to education studies to help the campus adopt new technologies. 
One of the things that I got most excited about through my experiences working with multiple instructors on MOOCs at Coursera was the ability to utilize online tools, technologically enabled tools, to support teaching not just in the MOOC format, not just on a purely online course format, but to really benefit and supplement the on-campus or in-classroom content. There's so many different ways that we could be using technology to essentially allow us to have far more one-on-one -on -one style interaction with our students, even if we have 200 of them in the room. In other directions that we perceive for integrating online and offline classes is the new biological data science specialization in our computer science master program. And in this specialization, students may take some courses online, courses taught by UCSD professors. They now can get master degree in just one year because they work hard preparing uh, for classes even before they arrive to UCSD. We have a sequence of videos called When I Struggled where we share and also our students uh, share times that they had dif uh, that we had difficulty with the material that we're covering and then also strategies that we have for overcoming those difficulties and the learners have responded really well to this. More computer science professors are now developing new courses. They include Professor Daniel Kane, one of the creators of a series on data structures and algorithms launching September 19 on the Coursera platform. Looking to the future, UC San Diego professors who ventured into the world of MOOCs are optimistic, but warn that to be successful, universities must get behind its faculty in this field. There is a new realization that courses of the future are very polished, high-tech products, not unlike modern movies. A budget for high-tech MOOC would be at least $300,000, $500,000. The leader in online education, George Tech, that has been very successful, invested on the order of $300,000, $500,000 in each of their 21 courses. And of course, an individual professor normally cannot generate this amount of funds unless university steps in and start supporting these developments. The university can take a leadership role in online courses and in developing educational leadership in particular subjects. That's a very relevant place to be. Our work can also be adopted in classrooms across the country and the world so we can really influence the way things are taught uh, at other universities and uh, across uh, the globe. Thirty-five universities adopted them in their classroom. That is something that is very important for the University of California at San Diego, the University of California as a whole, to be perceived as an educational leader within computer science. According to Scott Klemmer, high-caliber online courses promise to yield benefits for all Californians and even the state's economy. California's long had an incredible ecosystem for entrepreneurship, uh, I think that, that online education enables that. California's long had an incredible community college system uh, that I really hope will continue. And I think online education can augment that for people who, whose schedules don't line up with you know, the community college semesters or you live far away from the place where that's offered or, or whatever. And so I think there's a, a big value for California to invest in online education.